Welcome to The Relay, a podcast from Gulf Relay, where we dive behind the scenes of our operations, teams, and industry. Can we start out by you introducing yourself? Hutchins, Brett Hutchins. Um, I'm a 64-year-old car dealer who basically, uh, my life got on kind of a wash, rinse, repeat cycle. Nothing was new anymore. And I thought, I've got to find something to stimulate my brain. You know, um, I mean, in the car business, it's like, if someone started talking, I could finish their sentence. If they had an issue, I already knew what it was before they got to it, you know? So nothing was new to me anymore. And I thought, I've got to try something. And I didn't want to like tar streets or roof houses, you know? I didn't want to go to that extreme, but I did want to, you know, activate my brain and physically. I wanted something, you know, physical and mental. And uh, so I thought, well, um, you know, started thinking about it and I thought, dang, trucking, let me, wonder what that's all about. So, right, 13 months ago, I went to the class, uh, scored 100 on the uh, all the little tests they gave me, and um, they told me that can't be done. I said, watch and hide and watch, you'll see. And so, and been here since then, love it. So you've been here 13 months? 13 months. I started off local, did the local deal for my training thing. Uh, went to regional immediately after local, went to regional driver and um, kind of OTR too, you know, went everywhere. And, uh, but my whole goal when I started was to be, be an owner operator. Um, I've owned my own business for 35 years. I've, I've, uh, I'm a cattle farmer too. We have a cattle ranch that we're a working real cattle ranch. Um, so I, I've always kind of been my own boss and I wanted to remain that way. And um, being an owner operator, you can. I control my own time. and. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. So you say that you have a cattle ranch. How do you, because that's, that's an early time that you have to get up and take care of things. Uh, my wife of 40 something years, um, well, man, 40, 45 years, whatever we've been together, my wife takes care of it. She's, a, she's about your size and uh, she's a pistol. <laughs> I mean, a pistol. She ain't, uh, she'll bottle feed a calf and the next day I'll go out there and calf be laying on the ground, you know, chilling out, and Joni be propped up beside it talking to it. Yeah. I mean, you're laid on. I mean, she's just, uh, she's a hammer when it comes. She's just uh, an incredible person. Yeah. She really is. And she runs our other business, too, our car lot. I mean, she runs it, so she does that, goes home, feeds cows, plays with their little horses. and. Uh, when do you guys sleep? We sleep. You know, I mean, we do. I'd normally come home on Thursday afternoon. And um, I'm normally Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, or Saturday at home, uh, to which, you know, that's when I do my honeydew list, haul hay and fix fence and all the nonsense she wants me to do. And, um, and then I leave out on Sunday morning. So I'll typically leave out Sunday morning, come home Thursday afternoon, sometimes Friday, like this week is gonna be a Friday, but that's by choice. I was taking a load out of Vicksburg yesterday when I, and they told me I needed to come here. I said, yeah, um, we'll have to do that tomorrow. So I grabbed the load in Vicksburg, and then the uh, dispatch that I was dealing with, Andrea, sweet girl, um, she said, if you can go do that, I'll try to find you a load out of Shreveport and get you back here tomorrow at 1. I said, well, I've already committed to this, so if you can't get me a load, just let me know, and I'll deadhead back home, and then we'll figure it out from there. So uh, she said, no, I got you a load. And so uh, I was waiting on them this morning, and uh, they got me loaded up, and I, you know, rolled on over here. So how, what was that process like if you were doing regional and now you're OTR and? Um, well, regional and OTR is kind of like, it, that's, that's a guideline by how far you go out. And regional is typically about 500 miles in and OTR is everywhere. And I'll go anywhere, I don't really care. Um, but um, the process to go from that to OO is not you know that difficult you've got to be you know worthy of being able to do it and you've got to be a self-starter and self-motivated i have no issues with any of that stuff you got to be able to manage your time efficiently and um and mostly if i could give any advice to anybody out there that wants to do that um you got to manage your fuel yeah. um you know you have your fixed expenses you have no control over that they're fixed that's done uh, your payments and insurance, things like that. But what you do have control over is your time, the efficiency of your time, and your fuel. And your biz biggest expense as an OO, hands down, bar none, it's not the truck, it's not the insurance, it's your fuel. And if you don't manage that properly, um, I mean, 
you'll be turning your truck in in six months. How do you manage that properly? Like, I don't want you to tell us secrets that you oh, know no, are yours, I, I would No, no, I would love to share it with everyone because um, some of them seem too stupid to get it. Sure. I tell them all the time, if they'll just listen, if you'll slow down four miles an hour, if you'll just slow down four miles an hour, I'll show you how you can save twelve to $16,000 a year. Slow down four miles an hour. That's all you got to do. Uh, on what we drive, 150,000 miles a year. You, you think some of them are doing it? They're, they want to get the trucks turned up even faster. I'm like, it's stupid. The other thing is um, where you buy your fuel. And, um, you know, uh, you got to plan your day, work your plan. So every day and, and hopefully a day or two out, I try to plan my fuel. So if I know, like, for instance, uh, two days ago, Tuesday, I was coming through Minden, Louisiana. Well, I know that's the cheapest fuel in the South, 371 a gallon minus my discounts, 40 cent discount. So I filled up in Minden. I've run 1,400 miles since then. That was two days ago. Came back, still had a half tank of fuel, but I was passing right back past Minden to come here. And I didn't need fuel, but I knew where I was going, Minden, 371 a gallon. Where I was taking this load to, North Mississippi, 453 a gallon. So now do I want to pass on that and go up there? Then I need fuel. And now it's 453 a gallon. It's a spoke. And I said, now pass. So filled it back up with the 371. And you're always going to use it. You know, you're, yeah, you're yeah. always going to use yeah. it. So whether I fill up today or wait till Monday or Tuesday and fill up, it's just, and you try to tell them. And so here's the main reason why they don't. Here's what they say. I don't want to stop twice. I'm say, So if I show you a way where if you stop and fill up and it takes you 10 minutes and it saves you 80 to $120 over the next day, and it, so that's like you're, now you're working for $20 a minute, not $20 an hour, because that's what you just saved by going in and filling up now. And they're like, I don't want to stop twice. I'm like, well, I mean, how stupid is that? So you mentioned something earlier that I want to kind of get into. Uh, you said that you and some of the guys just like FaceTime while you're driving? No, we don't FaceTime. Oh, we okay. talk on our you headsets. You talk on the headsets. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. And what, which people do you do that with? You want me to name names? You know, I mean, kind of. Okay, Mark Trotman. He's okay. a OO. Um, Isaiah, he's an owner-operator, both with Gulf Relay. Uh, Mark came here with me. Actually, I was coming here, and I brought him with me. Um, and then uh, my nephew, his name's James Coker, he drives for Swift, and um, he's a 10-year, million-mile driver, no tickets, no wrecks, million miles, 10-year guy, just got the plaque and the thing on his truck and the jacket and all that, great kid, I raised him. Um, and then uh, Nick Cheatham, who's my brother-in-law, and he just came here, and he becomes an owner-operator this Monday. He had to do his 30-day trial to see if he's worthy of being one, and um, he, he's passed that and he's good to go. And um, so now he's, uh, he becomes an owner operator Monday, yeah. this coming to Monday. So, so what do you guys talk about for, I mean, cause you guys are on the, on the road for hours. Yeah, um, you know, mostly we talk about the docks, um, the efficiency of, or inefficiency of, um, how to get into the place, how to get out of the place, how long it's gonna take, um, who, you know, Who's there? Are they are they gonna make you wait? Are they like Johnny on the spot? You know that kind of thing. Um, our route's a big deal. You know um, how we're gonna go and how we're gonna come. You know go. You know if he's been to a dock I haven't been to. I've been to a dock he hadn't been to. We talk about all of that stuff. So it's a it, uh, it's a tremendous help when you have a group of uh, three or four people that you can communicate with like that. Um, because we have you know I mean we're out there. You know, riding the road, you get, you know, I'm not going to say lonely is a, is, because that's probably not the word that would describe me. It probably describes some people, mm -hmm. but it's more like, um. Like, is it stir crazy? No. Oh, no, 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 no. You're way too focused for that. <laughs> no, it's a focus fest. The entire time you're out there, you're, you got to be focused to do, you know, you're 75 feet long and could be 80,000 pounds. You got to be focused. Uh, no, it's more like, um, um. It's more like you're on your own, and um, you wonder if anyone that you deal with really cares. So, because they have no idea what you go through uh, with the stupid drivers and uh, the people cutting you off, and there's plenty of polite people and tons of great people that are 
flash you in and let you go and they know what you're going through, but there's a bunch of them that just don't care. Well, they have no idea what the industry is like. They have no idea. Yeah. Zero. No. They're clueless. Um, and, and I will say this, a lot of drivers out there like that too. Truck drivers, they're all, I mean, there's a bunch of them that are just horrible. If I was DOT, I'd, you're out of here. Give me your license. You're too stupid to drive. I mean, there's plenty of those guys out there too, but there's a ton of great ones, a bunch of good ones. Um, so anyway. Okay. I'm going to ask you one more question. Um, who's your favorite person at Gulf Relay? Just My because favorite. I'm, I'm, I'm just like, you know, taking a bit of a poll now. For my own amusement. My favorite person? Yeah. <laughs> TJ's mean, over there coughing. You mean uh, like, like, um. When you see him, you're just like, you you know you're in for a good conversation. God, that'd be hard to answer. I mean, everybody here likes me. <laughs> I mean, ask Bryce. <laughs> Bryce loves you too? I don't know. He might. <laughs> but, <laughs> On Wednesday. Yeah, I mean, I, I have my days just like he does. I've known these, I've known him since he was about probably nine years old. And a couple of other guys around here I've known since they were children, literally. And uh, like I say, we have a farm. Uh, ask him, if you ever interview him, ask him about the high school graduation party they threw at, at my farm. <laughs> I almost had to call my own police out there. Well, what, what brought you to Gulf Relay? You just, you just knew the company already? Uh, uh, Blanks, Baldwin. Uh, Blanks is, uh, w was one of my weekend kids. He, pretty much was raised out there on my farm and Blanks was one of the three or four original people that started this place. Yeah, he is. We're going to have to interview him too. He'll be on the show. Oh, uh, will he? Oh yeah, yeah He's absolutely. a good kid. He is. And uh, Blanks and my son Jared, my son Jared works for International Paper Company. He's uh, in their home office and uh, him and Jared have been great friends since probably fourth grade, fifth grade. I could tell you a great story about Blanks' dad and how I met him, but um, you probably don't have time for all that. We'll probably do another episode with okay, you. I feel, like. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like you've got lots of good stories and you're good at, you're no, very personable, yeah. good to talk to. Yeah. Um, but I guess we'll end on like, you know, why do you stick around at Gulf Relay? Um, I just, uh, I mean, it's the sense of purpose that I have. I, I feel like I, I'm, I'm pretty good at this. Uh, I know I'm efficient. I strive to be that way. Uh, uh, you know, I've always wanted to be the best at what I did. And um, I don't know what my ranking would be in the company, but I would think if if there were a percentage, I've got, I would think I'm in the uh, top three yeah. percent. I would think. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that. No one's ever told me. But. I'm not. I'm not going to be able to tell you yes or no on that. I have no. No, clue. I know. <laughs> I, oh, I know. Yeah, I know. You don't know either. I'm not sure they do. <laughs> but, but but I would like to think. If, uh, uh, you know, if I had room for improvement, mm -hmm. that someone would say, hey, you know, you've got room for improvement in this area, uh, you know, hey, I'm all for that. Give no me one tells you anything. No, I, I, all you need to do is give me the information. I'll run with it. Heck yeah. Well, it's been really good talking to you, Brett. Awesome. And I uh, wish you luck on the rest of your journeys that you've got ahead of you today. Thank you. Yeah, well, I'm fixing to um, head. I've got a four stop. I've got about $200,000 worth of four wheelers in that truck out there. All right, well. And, uh, <laughs> so I've got four stops to make on that. I'm gonna try Don't say that too loud. TJ might break in there and drag one out. They don't want to break in my truck. <laughs>